This is going to be verse by verse of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. And we're going to talk about the subject of the word of the Lord. So 2 Thessalonians 3, 1. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified, even as it is with you. So the word of the Lord should be glorified. And Paul has a prayer request to the Thessalonians that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified. And when he says free course, he wants them to pray that he can preach the word without a bunch of resistance from the flesh and the world and the devil. And many times when you watch street preachers, the people will get in their face, they spit on them, they cuss them, sometimes maybe even talk over them. Maybe the devil stops certain preachers from getting to where they're going to preach even. In some places, it's illegal to preach the gospel. But Paul uh, wants them to pray that the word of the Lord will have free course and that there won't be so much resistance. Sometimes when a town could get a new sheriff or something who's not a Bible believer, maybe he'll stop the Bible believers from preaching in the jail. He's keeping the word of the Lord from having free course. Uh, keeping the word of the Lord from having free course is the work of the devil so paul is praying for an open door and he also wants them to pray that the word of the lord will be glorified the word of the lord isn't being glorified like it should be in psalm 138 and verse 2 it says i will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name God's magnified his word above his name. And when men correct the Bible like they do today, then it's not being glorified. And every man will begin to do what is right in his own eyes, just like they were doing in the book of Judges. When you don't have the word of the Lord as your final authority, you'll start doing things um, con about everything con concerning your feelings. How do you feel about it? What was your experience about it? That's how you'll start judging on whether a thing's right and wrong. How do you feel? How does this person feel? Is it politically correct? That's not giving uh, the Bible the final authority in your life. Every man will begin to do what's right in his own eyes. Second Thessalonians 3, 1 and 2. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. Now, number two, the word of the Lord shows who is on your side. There are unreasonable and wicked men who have not faith. Those are the ones that aren't on your side. When you get an open door to preach the word of the Lord, that is when the unreasonable and wicked men will show up, and the word goes against most of their lifestyles. So they become unreasonable. They would rather have their lifestyle that contradicts the word of the Lord than to have the word of the Lord to have free course. So they will begin to censor the truth. They will begin to fact check everything you say and won't let anyone fact check them. And the only negative things that can be said will be about you and not about them. They won't allow anything negative to be said about them and the people who believe like them. These are the types of unreasonable and wicked men to avoid. Men like that, men who are teaching the extreme false doctrine that maybe baptism is necessary for salvation or Jesus that Jesus is not God, things like that. And Paul uh, mentions people to stay away from. In 1 Corinthians 5.11 he says, But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or extortioner, would such an one know not to eat? In 2 Corinthians six seventeen, he says, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. In Ephesians five eleven, he says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. You need to stay away from unreasonable and wicked men. But in the word of the Lord will show you who's on your side. He'll show you the unreasonable 
and wicked men. And when you familiarize yourself with the book, you'll be able to see the unreasonable and wicked men a lot easier. Paul says here in 2 Thessalonians 3 that all men have not faith. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. There are a lot of fools who are teaching that there is no God. But verse 3 in 2 Thessalonians 3 says, But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. So the Lord is faithful, more faithful than your wife, your mother, your pastor, your father, or anyone else, and will keep you from evil. If you get out of... Uh, these circles of unreasonable and wicked men and you get out the king james bible you get out his instruction book and listen to what he says and he's going to show you the unreasonable and wicked men and verse 4 says and we have confidence in the lord touching you that you both do and will do the things which we command you so he says do the things which we command you so the word of the lord is authoritative the word should be your final authority. Notice Paul says that you both do and will do the things which we command you. The Bible has more than just ten commandments. Paul has all kinds of commandments. It's an authoritative book. When you speak the words, then you can speak with authority and boldness. In Mark 1.22, it says, And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as described. So Jesus has authority because he was all about the written word. He was the living word, preaching the written word. Paul had the living word in his heart, and he hides the written word in there too. Without the authority of the Bible, then you have to live by your opinion. And some people think certain things are right that other people don't think is right. Some people think things are wrong that other people don't think are wrong. But the word of the Lord is authoritative. It will tell you for certain what's right and wrong. In 2 Timothy 4.2, Paul says to preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. It's an authoritative book that you can use to reprove and rebuke. 2 Thessalonians 3, 5, And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. So that the word of the Lord teaches you patience. We are patiently waiting for the redemption of our bodies. Psalm 27, 14 says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The, the word of the Lord will teach you patience. In Romans 5, 3 through 5, it says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. The more you are waiting on Jesus Christ, the more patient you will become. And you're truly waiting if you're suffering with Him, and making sacrifices along the way. All the suffering and tribulations will make you patient. And the word of the Lord does not teach flying off the handle and having a, a quick temper and getting mad. In Galatians 5, 22 through 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. The fruit of the Spirit would be Long suffering. In James 5 7, it says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he received the early, early and latter rain. And then verse 8, Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. The word of the Lord will teach you patience. 2 Timothy 2.24, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. If you pray for patience, then God might allow you to go through some tribulation. Tribulation worketh patience. The Bible teaches you patience. 2 Thessalonians 3, 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which he received of us. So the word of the Lord gives you a true tradition. Many men choose their tradition over the word. 
but a Bible believer lets the words start his traditions. The Pharisees let man's tradition override the words. In Mark 7, 8, it says, For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things you do. Many men will let silly traditions of men be more important than the actual traditions that Paul's laid out for us in the Bible. Colossians 2, 8 says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. If you start a tradition based on the word of God, then that is a good tradition. Traditions are talked bad about so much because most of them started with someone's mother or their grandfather. Man's tradition. And people have just done everything because their papa did it throughout the years. But if it's a good tradition, a biblical tradition, then there's nothing wrong with it. There is good tradition, and there is a pure religion. In James 1.27, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. I know this is aimed doctrinally at the tribulation there in James 1.27, but practically, there is a pure religion. I hear people at work talk about me sometimes and they say, don't cuss around him, he's religious. Now, I'm not religious in the sense that works get me to heaven. But if being a Bible believer that tries to live right because you love Jesus Christ makes you religious, then I am that. And I never tell anybody to quit cussing. But if they see you reading the Bible all the time, they start feeling bad about their dirty mouth. And they think... Well, I don't need to cuss around him. He's religious. There is a pure religion. Now, most religion is works-based salvation and satanic and things like that. But there is a pure religion. There is a pure tradition. The Word of the Lord will teach you what a pure religion is and what good tradition is. In 2 Thessalonians 3, 7, it says, For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. The word of the Lord shows you how to behave. It says in 1 Timothy 3, 15, But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. There are Christians running around that don't know how to behave. There is a guy at work that they call Bishop and he's pastored several churches. And he cusses more than Eddie Murphy. He cusses more than Howard Stern. He will say the F word and talk about church in the same sentence. He behaves himself disorderly. He ruins his testimony and adds afflictions to the work of other Christians. Every lost person he comes across has to have his trust earned back by faithful Christians that will come in his life to try and lead him to the Lord because he's seen this cussing bishop as they call him second thessalonians 3 8 through 9 says neither did we eat any man's bread for naught but wrought with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any of you not because we have not power but to make ourselves an ensample unto you to follow us when paul was around he wasn't a beggar he didn't expect people to give him food and drink he worked with his own hands he was a tent maker and he labored for money. He, be, he preached the gospel. He wasn't going to be in debt to any man. It wasn't because he had not power. It was his right to accept money for preaching the gospel. As he teaches, those that preach the gospel should live of the gospel. But he wanted to be an example to believers and to lost people. It's about every other day that the men at work laugh at, at churches they've heard of for taking the tithes automatically tithes automatically out of someone's bank account because the people give the church their debit card number and the, the church just takes the money automatically out i mean they think it's a money making machine and that's what it is many times but it shouldn't be that way and pastors talk about money so much that it brainwashes people into thinking you have to have a lot of money to do something for god and you don't but that's what lost people see. They see a pastor, they think, well, he's making all this money. He wants my money. And they think it's just about making money. But the word of the Lord shows you that's not so. 
because next the word of the Lord is a better ensample. Second Thessalonians 3, 8, 9 says, Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we not, might not be chargeable to any of you, not because we have not power, to, but to make ourselves an ensample unto you to follow us. Look at Philippians 3, 17. It says, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. The word of the Lord is a better ensample on how to live for the believer than anything else, better than any uh, any influential person you can think of. The word of the Lord is a better ensample. An ensample is something you follow completely. Paul is our ensample. An example is something you learn from, but don't don't follow completely. When we read about the children of Israel in the Old Testament, they are our examples. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, 6, Now these things were our examples. We learn from the Old Testament, we don't, we don't follow what they did completely. For example, we don't sacrifice animals. Paul was more than an example. He was an ensample to the Thessalonians. And they were to follow him and walk as he walked. For example, uh, they would follow Paul more than they would follow Moses. Now Moses could be their example but they wouldn't do everything moses did because they were in a completely different dispensation than moses was now the uh, for the people in moses day moses was there in sample but in the for the thessalonians paul was there in sample and moses would have been their example and paul was a worker and i respect the good worker he He's, and he says to the Thessalonians in verse 10, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Many fathers today aren't the spiritual leader of their home. They don't read the Bible. They aren't a good ensample for their kids to follow. They won't work, but yet they have more food than people who do work. And, uh, for example, at where I work, I can't even pay somebody to work with me. They won't work worth a flip they come in late they won't show up they won't help me even when they're there they run out of energy they won't move fast enough they have no ambition or drive it's a shame that you have you have able able-bodied men sitting around doing absolutely nothing instead of raising their kid they want to play uh, video games they want to stay out all night and do wicked stuff but paul said if a man would not work neither should he eat. And Second Thessalonians 3.11 says, For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. The word of the Lord teaches you that you need to work. It's disorderly not to work. When you don't work, you have time to get into everyone else's business. You become a busy body. 2 Thessalonians 3.12 says, Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. If you would get up and go to work consistently, after a while you can eat your own bread, drive your own car, have your own house, kiss your own wife. The guys that come into work are just there so they can say, uh, I tried to get a job. They really want to get fired. I honestly believe a lot of them really just want to get fired. They need a ride to and from work. They bum cigarettes off everybody. They won't pack a lunch. I've got kids and they are really no different other than my kids don't smoke. That's really the only difference. And my kids don't cuss like they do. They're like kids that have been drugged through the ringer or something and, and just lived the nightlife a lot. That's what they're like. And 2 Thessalonians 3.13 says, But ye brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Some people don't get weary in evil-doing. But any anytime they have an opportunity to do a good work, they run the other direction. But they could do evil constantly, and it doesn't make them tired. 2 Thessalonians 3.14 says, And if any obey not our word by this epistle, note that man, and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Like we said before, the word of the Lord will show you the unreasonable and wicked men, the men that you should stay away from. 
men that you need to you need to note that man and have no company with him. So Paul is saying not to have company with lazy people, just like you shouldn't have company with a drunkard or a fornicator, because they will show you ways to get by without working. Second Thessalonians three fifteen and sixteen. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. If a fellow Christian is lazy and in sin, don't count him as your enemy. Admonish him. Give him some warnings about the consequences of what he's doing. In 1 Thessalonians 5.14 it says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. So don't just kick him and do away with him. Admonish him. Warn him. And be a good worker so that you can be an in-sample to him. Second Thessalonians 3.17 The salutation of Paul with mine own hand, which is the token in every epistle, so I write. Sometimes Paul wrote his epistles. Sometimes Paul spoke them and someone else wrote them. And he says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. The second epistle to the Thessalonians was written from Athens. So this is the end of the book of 2 Thessalonians, the epistle of 2 Thessalonians.